All right, guys, third video I'm making today for you guys. So I feel like I've already talked to you twice. But anyway, um, so I think we're looking at, what is it, Monday, and we're jumping into implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation is something that I normally, um, in the past, have not done with my students, but it's something I definitely wanted to give you guys a taste of. I started doing it about a couple years ago, and I felt like it made it easier when you were in AP Cal of seeing this. Um, especially if you're BC and you're jumping in with Helmers. So um, it's not hard. Um, implicit differentiation sounds really uh, technical, but the only difference, by the way, what I'm saying is implicit differentiation. And implicit differentiation is taking derivatives, is taking derivatives of equations that aren't in function form necessarily. Uh, what you have been, I'm going to say implicit, and I'm going to have an arrow going over here. What you've been doing so far is explicit differentiation. And explicit uh, equations are like functions written in terms of F. You know, things like this or whatever. Anything written Y equals, and there's only one variable, F of, e F of X equals like 5 sine cubed of... 6x, all of these things, or even things written like in terms of t, you know, like maybe I had some position function in terms of t, okay? These are all explicitly expressed in terms of s, I mean in terms of a function f or a y or something like that. Well, implicit differentiation might have x's and y's together. So you might have something like 2x squared minus 3xy to the fourth minus 5y equals 10x minus 3. Who knows what they look like? A uh, lot of problems like your uh, conic sections are written in implicit differentiation form because they're not solved in terms of uh, y in terms of some variable x. So a lot of times you're unable to actually put them in explicit form like this one. I cannot solve for y at least that I know how right now off the top of my head, I cannot solve 4y in terms of x. So when you're written, something's written implicitly, the process is a little bit different or seems different because I usually skip stuff here with explicit. So what I'm gonna show you first is kind of what I've been skipping and hopefully that will make sense. But then when we go back and do an, a differentiation of a, an equation like this, you'll go, oh, that makes sense why we skip stuff here with explicit differentiation, but not with implicit, okay? So the first thing I wanna talk about, sorry, I keep getting messages popping on my screen. I can't see what I'm doing. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is what am, I, what am I actually skipping? Okay, so let me show you two functions, and I'm gonna essentially, the first function is something, actually it's not a function, it's just gonna be an expression, okay? but it's just gonna have a single variable. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a U substitution and I'm gonna rewrite this as three times U to the sixth. This is three blah to the sixth, this three U to the sixth. So if I were to give you these two expressions and say, okay, take the derivative of them, you would basically DDX both parts. Now, the reason why we write DDX is because we're taking a derivative with respect to the X variable, okay? And what I have done so far, you've done this before, you've said, well, I have a function inside of a function, so that's a chain rule. So I'm gonna start with the six and go six times three is 18. Do not touch the inside stuff to the fifth. Copy it down. So I'm not changing anything there. I'm just dealing with the outside power. And then, now that I basically dropped the three and applied the power rule, I'm done with that. Then I go back and link this together with five X squared minus seven X. Now what I did not do here, but what you do see before is I did the rule, but then what I did is I took the derivative of this. I basically took the derivative of the blah with respect to X, I DDX the blah. And that's what you see right here. Well, let me show you that here. Here to take the derivative, I'm going to say basically drop the three down and go six times the front, which gives me 18, u to the fifth. You can see that's the same thing I have here, 18 blah to the fifth, 18 blah to the fifth. And then just like I did here, I'm gonna go back and take that middle part 
take, go back and take that, and I'm gonna take the derivative of the blah, the u, with respect to x, and I'm gonna link that right here, but I don't know what u is. So I end up writing du dx. That's the chain rule. Now, if I did know what that u was, like I do here, then I could actually take the derivative of it, okay? And by the way, if you think about it, if that's just a regular x, what's dx dx? Well, I wouldn't have to write dx dx because dx over dx cancels and leaves me a one. But because I don't know what u is, and it could be different than x, I have to leave this derivative of u with respect to x. That's implicit differentiation. Okay, and the reason why I don't see it here is because the derivative of an x, if I went back and took the derivative of each x with respect to x, I get dx dx, which is one, so I don't bother writing it. But when it's not, when that variable doesn't match with respect to this, then I have to write a du dx, okay? So technically, when you have something like a four x squared, well, I'll do four x to the seventh, when you have a 4x to the 7th and somebody says, take the derivative of that, you guys, and me included, have been relatively sloppy, but you're, sloppy is good in this case, and you write 28x to the 6th. But what we don't do is take that middle part and say, take the derivative of that x with respect to x. Why with respect to x? Because that's what I took the derivative with respect to. Because dx dx cancels and leaves me a 1. And what's the point of doing that? So we've been leaving it off and just saying this. But what if this had been something like 5y to the 8th? And I'm saying, what is the derivative with respect to x? Well, if I say with respect to x, you're going to say 40y to the 7th, like you always would do. But then when you take a derivative of y with respect to x and put it on the outside, that doesn't cancel like it did here. So you have to dy dx on the outside and leave it. That's implicit in action. Okay, now if you're like, well, what if I ddy'd it? Well, if I ddy 5y to the eighth, if I did that there, well, what would I have? I would have 40 y to the seventh, like I did before, but then when I dy dy this, dy dy is one, well, I don't have to bother. And then if you go back to this, what would happen if you d dy'd it? Well, I would still have the 28x to the sixth, but I would then have dx dy, and I would have dx dy sitting out there. So it all depends on what your d d variable is, what that is, whether it's x or y or t or whatever. And a lot of people really get messed up on this, okay? Like for instance, they'll see an equation in the future like 5x to the 10th, and I'll say, hey, what's the derivative with respect to time? And I'll say basically d d t, not d d x. Basically the time is the x-axis, not x. And you may go, what's x mean? Who knows? But it doesn't really matter. If I said this, you're still gonna go 50x to the ninth like always, but then you're gonna go back and say the derivative of x, right? The derivative when you ddt the x, that's dx dt, that would have to go dx dt out to the side. That's implicit differentiation. And it all has to do with, with respect to x. Now, everything we've done, what we've done going back to this, everything we've done has been with respect to x. So when I take the derivative of this function, this y with respect to x, I just get dy dx, right? Like think about it, if that's a y and I take a derivative, I get one dy dx, which is why I've just been writing dy dx or f prime or y prime. That's what that means, okay? But now when we move into this, I can't do that. I can't just write y prime because I can't solve for y with this y and y to the fourth. I mean, I could, but I'd have y's on the right side. When I say solving for y, I mean having a y over here with explicitly written in terms of one other variable, okay? So that's what, that's what it implicit is. I wanna run through a few of these practice problems, see what you can do, um, and then I'm gonna go to the worksheet on page 101 and take a look. So the first one I wanna take a look at is this one right here, which is 2x squared minus 3x times y to the fourth minus 5y equals 10x minus three. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do to take the derivative of this expression is I am going to ddx both sides, okay? Now, some people don't like writing that, but I like to write it. On most of my work, you'll see it. So the derivative of this, I'm gonna start the process. Now, notice I'm doing it with respect to x. And you may go, well, how do I know what to do it with respect to? For now, do it with respect to x. And then when we start getting into problems involving time, we might do it with respect to time, we might do it with respect to volume, we might do it with respect to area, who knows moving forward. <clears throat> but on the majority of the work we do, we're gonna do it with respect to x for now. Because it's just, we're getting used to this, right? So let's take the derivative of the first part. And I get 4x to the first, and then I don't have to write derivative of x with respect to x because that would have canceled. Moving on to this. Now, what do you see here? I see a product. Now, some people like to think about that as the negative of 3x times y to the fourth. And if they do that, they're going to have to put a negative and then a big giant parentheses and go first to second plus second to first. I don't really like doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group that negative. I see a product. I'm going to group that with that and that together. And then I'm just going to put a plus out there because plus a negative means minus. And that way I can just drop the plus down and start my product rule. And I never have to distribute anything back. If you do that on your product rules, you're going to be right way more than you're wrong. The people that miss this are almost always the ones that don't do that. They just drop the negative down and then they go first to second plus second to first and then they end up being wrong. So I'm gonna drop a plus down and go first and then here it comes, d second. So the derivative of the second part is not just 4y cubed. It's 4y cubed times the derivative of y which is dy with respect to x, dy dx. So first d second plus second d first, which is just negative three because I don't have to go negative three and then dx dx because dx dx is one. And then finally, the derivative of negative five y is not just negative five, it's negative five times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. And for those of you who are like, can I just write y prime? You need to not be in that habit. It's just a terrible habit to be in when you're doing implicit differentiation in my part. So trust me on that. Use dy dx. All right, then I have an equal, and the derivative of 10x is 10, technically 10 dx dx, but don't have to bother. And the derivative of negative three is zero, technically zero dx dx, but again, I don't have to bother because zero is zero. All right, now, that's my implicit differentiation. Now, what I like to do when somebody says find the derivative is actually find the derivative. And the derivative means dy dx. And look, there it is. So how do I solve for dy dx? Well, if it makes sense, again, I'm trying to find the derivative of this function. Well, the derivative, so far we've always been writing it as y prime or dy dx or f prime of x, right? So if I've always been writing it as y prime or dy dx or f prime of x, if that's what my derivative has always been written, written, written as, then why don't I keep with that and write it like this? So what I'm gonna do is, for now, I'm gonna solve for dy dx. So I'm gonna leave those terms, which are basically all of that and all of that. I'm gonna leave those here and I'm gonna move these to the other side, okay? So I'm gonna leave this here, and, and you're gonna to get to where you can do this in your head. All of this is negative 12 xy cubed dy dx. And then I'm gonna leave this negative five dy dx. You're gonna to get to where you can do this in your head. And I'm gonna leave the 10 on the right side. I'm gonna subtract this 4x. And then I'm gonna add this negative three y to the fourth because it's negative on the left, I want it to be positive on the right, right? That's just basic algebra. And then the last step, I'm gonna factor the dy dx out. And when I factor it out, it leaves me this. And then guess what you're gonna do now? That's right, you're going to divide by all of this. Now you guys, I know can do this in more than, in less steps than I just did it. So I'm gonna divide both sides by that, and that gives me dy dx equals all of this. You following me? Okay, 
So that is my derivative, which means if I wanted to find the derivative at the x value of, or at the point two, one, I plug two in for x and one in for y, and whatever that fraction ends up being, that's my slope at the point two, one. So it's a little bit different from finding slope at certain x values because over on explicit differenti differentiation, all I needed was an x or maybe a t. Here, I'm gonna need probably the whole point, all right? So there's an example. We're gonna go through these a little bit slowly on this classwork homework. So if you wanna look at uh, this with me on page 101 and 102, I'm gonna do a few of these and leave you guys the rest, okay? So to 101. All right, so I'm taking a look at this. Let's we'll start pretty basic. Here is a function. It is actually in explicit form. So the derivative of y will be one times dy dx. So I don't have to write one times dy dx, right? When I take the derivative of both sides, I could just write dy dx. The derivative of that is 36x squared, technically, times dx dx, which I don't have to write, plus 8x, technically, times dx dx, which you don't have to write, minus five times the derivative of x, which is technically dx dx, which you don't have to write, and then minus zero, which I don't have to do anything. So this hasn't changed a bit. And then of course, the second derivative would be the derivative of the first. So technically what I'm doing is I'm ddxing that, which gives me d squared y over dx squared. And I end up getting uh, 72x, technically dx dx, which you don't have to write, plus eight, technically dx dx, which you don't have to write. Okay, now this one's gonna be a little bit different, but kind of the same again. I'm just trying to get you lubed up again, get you uh, ready to go, ever all the, the gears moving smoothly. So dy dx here, the derivative of the y uh, is one, technically one dy dx. And then here I'm gonna go low, d high. So the derivative of the high is six x minus two, but technically it's six x dx dx minus two dx dx. But again, don't have to write it minus high, um, which is this, times d low, which is four, technically four dx dx, but I don't have to write it, all over the low squared. So again, just getting you some practice. Now, if you're gonna do the second derivative, I'm not gonna do that here, but if it were me, rather than going low d high and then the high being this really awful product rule minus a product rule and then having to go minus high d low, I'm gonna foil all that out and get it all simplified into a polynomial. And I'm gonna do that for this right here. And then I'm gonna take the second derivative. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this if it were me and then do the second derivative. You'll find that it's much easier in my opinion. Okay, now let's jump down to the explicit, I mean to the implicit differentiation. So here we go, number three, given this curve, find the slope. What does slope mean? The derivative. So find the derivative of this at that point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the derivative, like I did on that, that kind of the uglier example that I just finished, uh, not on this worksheet, but on, the, on my scratch, pad, scratch paper. I'm gonna find the derivative using implicit differentiation, and then I'm going to plug the point one, two in, and, and watch the form that I'm using. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna DDX the left and the right. So I'm gonna ddx the left side and the right side. Oh, and by the way, we call this form, this dy dx form, when we write it in this form like this, this is called Leibniz notation. And there were two guys who came up with calculus, uh, Newton and Leibniz, they both are given credit for it. A lot of people talk about Newton being the inventor of calculus more, um, but really they both came up with great stuff at the same time. There's also hints to calculus and people doing stuff even before that, but they really formalized papers on this and they, they both did it during the same time period. So they are universally credited with this, but we call this Leibniz notation, which I think is a much better notation than, than what uh, Newton was using. It really makes sense, especially when you look at, um, I know I talked with uh, Michael about um, the chain rule definition and proving uh, with, uh, with the chain rule as well as, um, as the e to the x uh, derivative rule we were talking about. And Leibniz notation really is important with looking at the chain rule. Anyway, whatever. Slope of that curve, I need to take the derivative because the derivative means slope of a curve at any particular point. So what's the derivative of the 2x part? Well, that would just be, I mean, of the x squared part. Well, that would just be 2x technically times dx dx, which I don't have to write. And then what do I see here? A product. What do I do with products? 
I group that as a negative X and a Y, and then I put a plus in the front. So I'm just gonna drop down that plus, and then I can really easily go first to second plus second to first. So first times the derivative of Y, which is what? One times dy dx, which I'm just gonna write out as dy dx. And then plus second, which is just the Y, and you don't need a parenthesis on that, times the derivative of the first, which is negative one. Technically dx dx, but I don't need that. And then plus the derivative of y squared, which is two y times dy dx. And then finally the derivative of three, which is zero. And that is my derivative of that explicit, uh, that implicit equation. But again, I wanna solve for the slope at one, two. Now, a lot of people go, why don't you just plug in one in for x and two in for y, and then you'll have a bunch of numbers dy dx, and then you could solve for dx dy or dy dx then. Fine. But I'm gonna, if you get the same thing I got, great. If you don't, now make sure you don't plug the one, two in for that y and that x and that y and that x, but you can do that for this x and this y. But it's not that big of a deal. Let me show you how quickly you can find this. I am gonna leave these two parts here. Watch, I can do it in my head. I'm gonna subtract two X to this side. I'm going to add Y, and then I'm going to end up with this left over. Well, when I look at that, what happens if I factor out the dy dx? What would you have with it? You would have a negative X plus a two Y. So you would have had a negative X right there, plus a two Y, and you might even do that step in your head. So divide both sides by negative X plus two Y. And I even do this part of my head and that's gone. There's your derivative. So if this is my derivative right here, let me show you how to write the derivative at the point one, two. Now, some people write it really wordy, I do not. Some people write DY DX, they draw this vertical line, that I do, I do that. So I do that. But some people go at the point equal to one, two, and then they plug the one and the two in. I don't do this. I'm not a big fan of that. I just say at the point one, two, okay? And then what I do is I plug a one in for X, so I get negative two times one. I plug a two in for Y, so plus two, over negative the X, so negative one, plus twice the Y, and when I do the math on that, I get two minus two is zero over four plus one is three. And we know that zero over three is zero. So the slope at that curve, at that point of this curve is that. So what does that tell you if the slope is zero? If the slope is zero there, then it must be going flat there, horizontal there. So that could be actually a relative max on this curve. I don't know because it might flatten out and then go back up. Like it, right? It might be rising and flattening out and then going back up has a slope of zero. Or maybe it just goes like this and has a slope of zero. Or maybe it comes down and has a slope of zero. We don't know it, but it more than likely looks something like that. Well, this is what we do in calculus. We learn to have, how to find relative mins and relative maxes and things like that. Okay, now this says find the second derivative at that point. Well, I've got the first derivative. What do you think you do to go to a second derivative? You take the derivative of the first derivative. So I'm going to ddx the left side, which gives me d2y over dx squared. And I'm gonna ddx the right side. So how do I take the derivative of that right side? It's a quotient. What do I do? I go low d high minus high d low over low squared. So let's get started. Low times the derivative of the high. Let's put that in parentheses. The derivative of the high is negative two, excuse me, negative two, right? Technically dx dx. Plus the derivative of the y is technically one dy dx. So I'm just gonna write dy dx. All right, first a low d high minus high times the derivative of the low. The derivative of the low is negative one, technically dx dx, but don't have to write it, plus the derivative of that, which is not just two, but two what? 
dy dx, that's right. Okay, and then all of that over the low squared. Now, let me tell you something. Here's where you gotta be careful with AP. See, sometimes AP calculus does this. They say, I want you to find the derivative, the second derivative at that point. So what they're really looking for is the second derivative, you just plugging one and two in. Now, what that makes you think you have to do is find the first derivative, like I did, and then um, uh, completely. And, but according to this, there's a dy dx in there. Now, dy dx, what do I do with that? Well, I just found this dy dx to be this. That's the same dy dx here. So technically, what I have to do is to plug this fraction into this parentheses and into this parentheses times a two. And that creates a really big mess. But if you think about it, all they really did was ask you to do what? Find the second derivative where? At the point one, two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug one, two in for X and Y everywhere I see it. And then for the first derivative part, I'm going to plug 1, 2 into the first derivative and get that value. Well, I've already done that. So right here, what I'm going to be doing is plugging this in for x and y, and whenever I get to the derivative, I'm going to find the derivative at 1, 2, and I'm going to use that value in its place. And that should shorten my process and keep me from having to write the real ugly second derivative out. Okay, because they really didn't ask me to do it. They said do it at that point. Now, if all they did was say, find the second derivative, then I would plug that in and circle it, okay? So here we go. N right here, I've got a negative x, so a negative one plus twice y, twice y is four. That's in that parentheses. And then in this parentheses, I have negative two plus the second derivative at one, two, which I already found to be zero. So I'm gonna plug a zero there. And then I have minus, now I have negative two times one, which is negative two plus two. What's negative two plus two? Zero. Now at this point I could be done with that whole part, but just to finish it off, I'm gonna go negative one plus twice times the derivative again at one, two is zero. So you can see here, I took that zero and I plugged it in there and in there because I, was, I had already found the derivative at that point. And then of course on the bottom, I have negative one plus two times two is four quantity squared. Okay, so right here, I end up getting three times a negative two, which is a negative six minus nothing, all that goes away over a three squared, which is nine squared, which is nine. So I end up getting negative two thirds. And you're gonna learn something next year you're gonna learn that when the second derivative is negative, we find that the gra graph is what we call concave down, which is bent downward. So let me ask you a question. If the graph is kind of cupped downward, concave down like a frown, right? Mm -hmm. Concave down, right at a point where the slope is zero, what does that tell you about that point right there? It must be a relative max. So this is stuff that we would use in calculus to determine perhaps if something had a relative min or relative max. And because of this information, I was able to determine that. You didn't have to do any of that. All you had to do was to answer the question, which was the first derivative and the second derivative at the point one, two. Okay? So anyway, that's a little, uh, a little bit about the second derivative. I've given you some work on number four, five, and six. Um, let me see if I want to do anything else for you. I tell you what, let's, I'm going to jump to number seven, and then you can finish up the rest. Number seven on page 102. Okay, so if you look at number seven with me, it gives you this function times dy dx equals that, not a function, this expression times dy dx equals that expression. What's the value of the second derivative at three zero? So really, I've already, it appears like somebody's already done the first derivative, but they, they got it to a point where they hadn't finished it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. dy dx equals that. And I'm gonna divide by that x plus two y. And that would be the first derivative. 
And you know what? If I'm going to have to find the second derivative at 3, 0, I'm probably going to have to know the first derivative at 3, 0. I, I know that from the problem I just finished. So I'm going to go ahead and plug 3, 0 in there. And when I plug a 3 in for x and a 0 in for y, I get 6 in the numerator. And I get 3 plus 0 or 3 in the denominator. So that first derivative is 2. So I went ahead and found that, not because they directly asked me for it, because I know I'm going to need that indirectly. Okay, so now to find the second derivative of this, the second derivative of y with respect to x, right? I take the second, or the ddx this, or ddx that, and I get that, okay? And then when I, um, sorry, d squared y, not dy squared, d squared y, when I take the second derivative of the left side, I get that. And what happens when I take the second derivative of the right side? I hear I'm with the quotient rule again. So low, I'm going to do a little faster. D high is 2 minus 1 dy dx. you got to remember the dy dx. Minus high, D low, the derivative of the low is 1 plus 2 dy dx. And then all of that is over the low part squared. Right? And then remember, that wasn't the question. The question was, what is the second derivative of y with respect to x at the point 3, 0? And again, if all I wanted was the second derivative, I would have to take this and plug it in there, right? You tracking with me? I heard you, George. All right, so if you're, if I, if you're tracking with me, rather than plug it in there, though, and make that really ugly... I'm going to just find the second, I'm going to plug 3, 0 in here, and whenever I get to that, I'm going to use the first derivative at 3, 0 and just plug it in, okay? It's, it's a bit of a shortcut. All right, so here we go. If I plug a 3, 0 there, I get 3 plus 0. If I plug a 3, there's no place to plug a 3, 0 in there, so all I have is 2 minus 1 times the derivative at 3, 0, which is 2. So I'm going to plug a 2 there. All right, and I already see that that's going away. And then right here, if I plug a three zero in there, I get a six. And right here, again, no place to plug a three zero in, so all I have left is one plus two times the derivative at three zero, which is two. And on the bottom, I get uh, three plus zero squared, which again is a nine. And then here, because that's a two minus a two is zero, all of that goes away. This ends up being 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 times 6 is 30. Make it negative, and I get negative 30 over 9, which reduces to negative 10 thirds, and that is A. All right? So, anyway, that's a great little AP question on number 7. Um, uh, very likely a uh, problem that you would see on a multiple choice question, perhaps a free response. But anyway, see what you can do on those. Um, uh, you will probably have one problem like that on your test for you to do. Uh, may or may not be multiple choice. We'll see. I don't know how I'm going to do this second test. Haven't gotten there yet. So good luck, guys. And, um, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Take care.